And welcome to St. Ambrose. Good to say it. Um, this evening we celebrate the most holy body and blood of Christ. Today is June 5th, and our opening song is Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 519 in the Gather of the Lord. 519.
compassion. Grant, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all of the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars with the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord.
how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. It was written down. And we have it. 
And this is what St. Justin said those early Christians did. On the day we call the day of the sun, Sunday, all who dwell in the city or country gather in the same place. The memoirs of the apostles and the writings and the prophets are read as much as time permits. And when the reader has finished, he presides over those gathered and admonishes and challenges them to imitate these beautiful things. That we all rise together and offer prayers for ourselves and for others, wherever they may be, so that we may be found righteous by our way of life and actions, faithful to the commandments, so as to obtain eternal salvation. These prayers are concluded we exchange a kiss of peace. Then someone brings bread and a cup of water and wine mixed together to him who presides over those gathered. He takes them and offers praise and glory to the Father through the name of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And for a considerable time, he gives thanks that we have been judged worthy of these gifts. When he has concluded the prayers of thanksgiving, all present give voice to an acclamation by saying, Amen. When he who presides has given thanks, People have responded. Those who we call given, deacons give to those present the blessed Eucharistic bread, wine, and water. Some are taken to those who are absent. That was written in 157. And it, anybody that hears that who practices the faith knows exactly what's being what we are doing tonight. That's how powerful this meal is. It has lived through the centuries, protected by the Holy Spirit, given to us, given to us, who certainly can gather freely, in no way, shape, or form, are we going to walk out of here tonight, be arrested and thrown into a prison for what we've done here? We give thanks to God. But it keeps things in perspective, doesn't it? It should, I hope it does. How valuable this prayer is. And why it's so critical for us as Catholics to keep holding the Lord's day, commandment given to us from the time of Moses, to keep holy the Lord's day, by gathering in this place, reading the writings of the prophets, of the apostles, giving thanks over bread and wine that becomes the Eucharistic bread, the consecrated bread because Jesus' body, so that we can be fed. How powerful that is. We take it for granted because we get it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. One of the blessings of the pandemic will be we don't take it so much for granted. When we were separated from it for so long, and still with some restrictions, certainly not fear of death, those restrictions that we're under right now, we can still gather here. And we can pray as St. Justin described in 157. We pray the bloodless sacrifice. We heard about that first reading from Exodus of Moses and taking the blood and everything. Jesus established the new Passover. He established the new covenant where he left, he suffered, and shed his blood once and for all. That's why we call this a sacrifice, but we call it a bloodless sacrifice because Jesus already did it for us. And you know, when I stand up here, there's some prayers that the priest says as, you know, in place of Jesus that we say are called to say quietly. You probably have seen me do it. You don't hear what I say because they're meant to be say what. When I put the water in the wine at the offertory time, say, by the mingling of this water and wine, may Christ who offered who, who was the mind, who shared in our Remember when Jesus was laying down on the cross and they pierced his side, blood and water flowed. So we put a little water in the wine before it's consecrated. Jesus, who humbled himself, 
share in our community. What love God has for us that we should never take for granted. And then when you when we're doing the the uh, the Lamb of God and we're singing that. I take a little piece of the bread and I, I, I put it in the wine. I break off a little piece of host and put it in the wine. And I say the prayer, you know, may the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, I'm saying this for everybody, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, bring us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Healing remedy. That's what the Eucharist is. Brings us a healing remedy. So as we start coming back together again, and you know this is the last weekend that the dispensation is in place. So as we start coming back together again, with some restrictions, not pain and death, no one's going to lose shed any blood over these restrictions until we open up more fully. Let's keep it in perspective. But let us remember here what we do here it is so important to our lives as Catholic Christians. What God has given to us and even though we are not worthy for him to come under our roof as we pray, he comes. He comes to feed us to give us life so that we then can go forth and give life to one another. On this feast of the Holy Body and Love of Christ, this Corpus Christi Sunday, as we approach the table tonight to receive the Lord in the Eucharistic bread, let us give thanks to God. Let's give thanks to God that He feeds us. He's with us, and that we can be nourished to go forth and be the body of Christ to others by what we sing and do. That's why what we do here is so important. Because on our own, we can't do it. By the grace of God, by Him coming to us, word and sacrament, we can do it. Faith lives. Let us now profess the faith that binds us to God and to one another. I believe in one God, the Father.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who, caught, who are caught in violence and civil disturbance, may leaders work towards peace and may God guide their hearts to respect the dignity of each person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, may we pray for greater awareness of Christ living in us and showing him to others by word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people that need to make difficult medical decisions, may God give them guidance and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ill and suffering, may Christ's love heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people who have passed on, especially Dan Hinkle and Roger German, may they finally rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers and concerns that we have in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear our prayers. Keep us mindful and grateful of all you do for us as you feed us with your body and blood. So may we be strengthened to be Christ to one another. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Saving memorial of the cross. 
Jesus offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect sacrifice. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make us holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, might be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. So as we approach this table of this wondrous sacrament, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, may we pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and on earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, as without end we acclaim. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Jesus, you are the high priest. Thank you for giving us your saving body and blood in the Eucharist. Please help you men from our parish to respond to the call of the priesthood. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed here at the present age by our reception your precious body and blood, our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I know we've been praying for many years about vocations, but uh, the uh, Office of Vocations has little priests and nuns on popsicle sticks with a magnet. That could be a magnet thing. They're in the back of church, okay? So if you want to take one and put it on your refrigerator or wherever, to, to help you pray at home for vocations, they're back there. I just picked this little guy up, okay? So, and then also, uh, after all the Masses next weekend, since the dispensation will be lifted, we are having coffee and donuts in the parish center, okay? I know that's not the normal thing for 5.30, but I'm gonna ask you to eat dessert first before you do your supper. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to have coffee and donuts in the parish center, okay, next, next, uh, after all the masses next week. If you'd like to help, call the office, and I'm sure Beth will appreciate it. And then I also hear, through the grapevine, that the last Sunday of the month, um, from 2 to 4, 2 to 5, out here in the parking lot, we're going to have an ice cream social. So, okay, so we're, we want to give people, we want to give people a chance to, uh, Pray together, of course, but to do some social things. So if you feel safe enough next weekend, popping donuts over there after, after all the masses, okay? And then ice cream the last of the month, okay? We're getting it. We're getting it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass here is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Song is Alleluia, sing to Jesus. I will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Oh, number 826 in the gathering room. 